Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we are coming back again looking at the, the situation in the Middle East there. Uh, Vladimir Putin speaking about the possibility that, uh, that, you know, that they could arm the cruise missiles that are coming off of the submarine out in the Mediterranean with nuclear warheads. And it's not a, a general type of nuclear warhead, it's a specific type, a special type there. And RT News has carried this information. Uh, he said in, in, a, in a, to, uh, this, this was actually uh, yesterday, uh, speaking about that. And I want to show you, because I know there's been some people that have kind of scoffed at this, that uh, as far as him using nuclear uh, uh, weapons there, that it was actually never said there. But uh, I will share with you here on, on the screen here for you. You'll be watching it on YouTube. Those of you that are watching via live stream, we're having a little bit of a changeover in our office here, so you're not able to see it yourself. He says right here, though, we're playing the video here. He's talking to uh, his top general there, uh, so Sogoye. I can't pronounce his name quite right. But anyway, it says both the caliber missiles and the Cage 101 rockets are generally showing very good results. He goes on to state that um, uh, he says we, no we now see that these are, are new, modern, and highly effective high precision weapons that can be equipped with, with conventional or special nuclear warheads. Uh, and, and then he says, uh, we give a second to change on here, naturally we do not need that in fighting terrorists and I hope we will never need it. It's kind of interesting how the Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia there, actually puts this out in a public format for people to see. And I think a lot of this has to do with the, he wants the United States, NATO, their allies, Turkey, all of them to be aware of what he does have. Uh, he does say in another article here that these, that these have been deployed. I think, I think it's actually even in this video here. He says, but overall, this speaks to our significant process in terms of improving weaponry equipment being supplied to the Russian Army and Navy. Yes, it was actually in this video here. He is letting the world know these supplies are in their hands. They could change these warheads at any moment that they so chose to do so. Uh, and this would only uh, really cause a major issue. You've got to keep in mind, when he speaks of ISIS, he has also spoken publicly on many occasions already that the United States was the one that armed ISIS in the first place. And as well, he has now been pushing Turkey into this as well because he has the video footage showing that, yes, uh, Turkey is very much engaged in smuggling the oil from ISIS out of uh, Syria illegally and also arming and backing the, the, the militant group there in the country there. So we're looking at a lot of things that are going on. Of course, the, the downing of the, uh, the Su-24 Russian bomber, kind of kind of highlighting some of these things because we have a very special guest in with us today uh, via Skype there, Brother Gary Lowry out of California there. Brother Gary, we've known each other for quite a long time. And uh, Brother Gary, God has dealt with him many times in visions and dreams, mostly in dreams and many things that uh, he has shared with me uh, privately as well as it's been publicly. In some cases, even going so far as to, to, to reach the top uh, people in the Israeli government that also took very much interest in the dreams that he has had uh, and, and have really taken them into serious consideration, especially with one particular dream that I'm going to get Gary to speak about now, and that was the downing of an F-4 fighter jet in the mountains that I believe it's either on, it's right near the border of Israel and Syria is where this will happen at during a war game exercise. And right now we've got nothing but planes flying everywhere in the Middle East, including Turkey today going into Iraq and bombing uh, 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 facilities there on Iraqi soil against the Iraqi government. Uh, so it's a very serious situation. Brother Gary, God bless you. Thank you, brother, for being here with us. And uh, I'll just keep quiet for a moment as you take the floor, brother. Uh, thanks for having me on, Steve. Um, you know, you and I have talked quite a bit about <clears throat> Bible prophecy and and about the roles of, uh, you know, Christianity and, and Judaism and how um, the, the aspects of the law for the Jew— and the aspects of the law for the Christ, for the Christians. And, uh, you know, we talked about how um, that Christ said that 
not one jot or one tittle of the law will pass away until all things are fulfilled. And we know that that hasn't occurred yet. All things have not been fulfilled yet. So there's two ways, I believe, really to a pathway to the to righteousness in God's eyes, you know, and that's for, you know, there's, we have Christ who forgives us of our sins. He is our sacrifice. And then we have um, Jewish people who are trying to make their way in using the law. And uh, the Lord has, you know, I really believe he's been showing me these things because he really cares about his people. He made, he made an oath to Abraham, a promise that can never be broken. And so God is, in the Old Testament, he's talking about how he's going to bring them back and how he's going to restore Israel and how, you know, this, uh, even during the millennial reign of Christ, some of the feast days will be are required to be kept because those are his feasts. They're not for the men or anything else. They're God's and he commands us to do that. And so I believe, you know, the Lord has been showing me these things, these prophetic things, so that, you know, maybe he could touch some of the people that are in Israel that have power to make changes, you know, and maybe it's for the end times uh, after the rapture takes place or whatever. But, you know, as you and I have talked, there's been many times the Lord has uh, told me different things would happen. And, and I, you know, I've made videos about some of these things and, and then other things you and I have pro talked about privately, you know, and I had talked about how these women would come into to Israel and they would be uh, terrorist women and they would dress as, as Jewish women and then they would commit acts of terror and those kind of things are now happening and they, they begin to happen just, you know, like, I don't know, maybe a year after I saw that. And, uh, well, you know, you know, brother Gary, and speak, speaking of that as well, one thing that, uh, just to kind of let people be aware of as well, it's not very common for, uh, women to do acts of terror in Israel. I mean, I was in a suicide bombing in 2004 that was a woman that did it, and there's been several that have done it, but the majority of terrorism has and always has been conducted by men. But like what you're saying here and what God had showed you there, uh, we have seen a huge rise in terrorist attacks uh, carried out by women in Israel. That has become very commonplace uh, in the Third Intifada. Yes, and and so um, and the Lord had shown me that they were going to make these new long-range missiles and use those to try to strike Jerusalem, and and I've made videos about all these things, and the Lord had shown me that that Russia would attack NATO forces, and what He showed me was the uh, He showed me a ship that had these forward lean meaning missile tubes, it was a very long ship, and it had a number on the side, and the side was 121. And the Russians have a ship called the Moskov, which has that designation, and it has those forward-leaning missile tubes in the front of the ship. And that ship has just been deployed to the Syrian area. And we know that Turkey has shot down the Su-24 Russian uh, plane, and uh, they've been going back and forth about this, and so they've de they've deployed the, the ship to the coastal area. It it is a standoff missile defense system, and then Russia has also brought in several uh, batteries of the S three hundreds and S four hundreds, and they also, from what I understand, are deploying the S five hundred, which is an anti intercontinental ballistic missile defense system. Why would they need that in that area? That, that's that's, that's a very no good question. Uh, yeah, now, no brother, brother Gary, yes. uh, where, as far as the S uh, the uh, the S five hundred missile system, there, where is this actually? Uh, what news source do, are you actually getting this from? I know you watch some sources that I don't even watch, uh, but I should be watching more often. Yeah, I believe I got that just from uh, RT or from Depka one. Depka, that's the one I was saying about Depka file. By the way, you guys, that Depka file is a very good uh, Israeli news source. And I, sh I am subscribed to it. I need to really get back into watching that. Go ahead, Brother Gary. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, well, yeah, one of those sources, I saw that, which I thought was very odd, because there are no, uh, 
no threats of intercontinental ballistic missiles. See, those are missiles that achieve orbit and then re-enter. And so you have to have a special type of interception system to knock those down because they're so, uh, the altitude of them, they go into space, you know. And so the other thing is Russia has moved all these T-90, which is their heavy main battle tank, their newest model. Those are being deployed to that area. And why? Why are they remove? Why are they moving all this equipment and things like that? The S four hundred missile system is also now preventing Israel from air operations over the Golan. And in fact, the air, the, this S four hundred. If you look at the radar mapping, they can even see planes take off from uh, Ben Gurion Air Air Base. They can take. They can see any place, almost the entire country of Israel where a plane might be flying in that country. So it's very dangerous for Israel right now because, you know, they cannot defend themselves. They have to have, uh, they have to call Russia and tell them, look, we're going to be uh, conducting operations in this area or that area. So they are very squeezed down, you know, they're very constricted on this. And then you have you know, uh, Obama and his policies, which have damaged Israel greatly. And Absolutely. so in that, you know, I've had a few dreams, Steve, and I. one of the dreams I had was I saw this F-4 Phantom and it was flying uh, camouflage colors, uh, desert colors, and the plane flew over. What I saw was two armies facing each other, and I don't know how this works or what it meant, but I saw two armies facing each other, and I saw the Turkish, I believe it was a Turkish airplane. I'm not sure. They're, I think they're the only ones still flying well, brother uh, Gary, if you know? if you remember, I don't know if I if I know I, we shared this together. This is the very dream that you had that we shared with the Israeli authorities there. I have a very close friend to Netanyahu there that uh, works in intelligence in Israel, and the F four. When we were talking about this with them, and I was in direct contact, uh, he shared with me there's only two countries that use this markings on the F four fighter jet, and it's Syria and Turkey. And they specifically told me that they do not expect that it would be Syria that would actually do this. Even though they are still technically at war with Syria, they said it would be Turkey that would be the, their major concern about. Go ahead, Brother Gary. Yeah, and so in this dream, I saw uh, Israeli troops positioned on these hills, and I saw this plane, and it went over the head of these soldiers, and... Uh, I don't know where this is, but there's two mountains. Wherever it is, there's two mountains, and they have trees on the mountains. They're not barren mountains. And they flew over this area, and he did a barrel roll, and he and he ran that plane into the ground, and and so that triggered a war. There was a there was a was a shooting war started with with Israel in this dream, and this whoever was in this plane because they thought Israel had something to do with it when Israel didn't have anything to do with it, and so. Um, you know, the Lord, uh, I really believe that was the Lord that showed me that. And I also, you know, had the dream that Damascus is nuked. And I see these, you see, now they've moved these missile launchers, these S, and that's what I saw in that dream, Steve. This is what's so important. Those missile defense systems are now being deployed to, to those areas where I saw them. And what I saw was these three in this dog lake area. And I've, and you know, I've talked about this and I kind of shared with, I think I showed you a map maybe of where I thought it was. It's in this, there's a wash. And anyway, there were three of those missile launchers there and they fired missiles. And, uh, and then that's whenever Damascus was hit with a, a nuclear weapon. And I believe it was a Israeli plane that does it. I could not see the plane. I just had a knowing that it was Israel that does it, and it and it you know vaporized the city of Damascus. It was it's gone. One thing, brother Gary. Let me and just share. And it's because they're. Let me yeah. just share this here with you that uh, that may give a justification why Israel could possibly do this. Uh, there, a lot of times Israel retaliates against the Syrian army, even though Russia is backing them for things that happen in Israel, but. We do know that Iran has a huge number of troops in Damascus right now, supposedly uh, fighting against ISIS uh, troops there. They're there at uh, the courtesy of uh, Basra al-Assad as well as Russia. 
so there's a justification right there uh, that could cause that provocation, especially if you see a war break out with Russia, uh, Turkey. Uh, and I think, Brother Gary, because I seen the scripture the other day where Nineveh will be totally wiped out, uh, uninhabited or desolate. And I mm -hmm. am wondering, especially seeing as we see that, that Turkey is there uh, in this area there. They're operating in this area there with the Kurds there. And I'm expecting that this may be one of the striking points with Russia is going to be Nineveh against them. Because now... It's like Russia, some of the things that Putin has said recently was he's, he's watching to see if Iraq, if Iraq wants Russia's intervention with Turkey being there in uh, their country. Yeah. yeah, and so that's what I saw was them launch missiles from those missile launchers and then that Israel responded. But I don't know how it played out within with the news later and then. You know, the Lord has shown me so many things, Steve, like he's shown me 15 at least things that actually happened. I even had a dream about the Thurman operation. And and then we found that this really was true. This uh, friend of mine, Steve Burkhart, found this guy that that invented it in some military st strategy. And when we when he began to talk to him about the dream I had, the guy said, look, you guys better drop this for your own life, you know, for your safety. You need to quit digging into this thing. So that was real. And then I dreamed about during the Olympics that five terrorists would attack the London Bridge. And just on and on and on, the Lord has been showing me things. And recently he showed me, he spoke to me when I was in the shower and told me a guy named Saeed will be destroyed for his terrorism. And he said the a name afterwards, like Saeed, Saeed something. And I thought it was like, ooh, you know, like Abu or something. But the guy's actual name is Saeed Farouk. And here in California, he committed those acts of terrorism. And I put a video out about him being destroyed uh, a week and a half or so before it ever happened, before Brother, the guy was ever destroyed. Brother Gary, You know, what's, before he did the crime. The name of your, if you would, let the people know the name of your YouTube channel there where they can actually go see this video as well, brother. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, Bear... 049 is the name of it. And I'll send you some links and stuff, but, you know, the Lord showed me that before it ever happened, and he was destroyed. You know, so the thing is, I'm not saying I'm anybody. None of us are really anybody. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God. And what God is trying to do is he's trying to, you know, let people know that, that he's in charge of all yeah. of this, that, yeah. that everything that is going on is under the purview of that same God that made that oath, that made that very first covenant with Abraham and with God's people, you know, with Israel. So that that is a that is the important thing to take away from all of this, you know, this stuff, whether it's you know, prophecy that's happening or whatever, it is God trying to reveal himself to people so that they can, you know, get their lives in order because uh the like this young boy this young jewish boy said the moshiach is coming and he said you know he said he's going to put his feet on the mount of olives that's right and he's going to do all these things you know and those are things that are right from the scripture you know yes yes brother, brother gary let me i want to just share something with the people there you know i've known brother gary for for a number of years now probably four or five years i would say at least and Brother Gary is just as humble as they come, and you know I know that sometimes he'll 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 express what he thinks he he thinks the dream might mean, and and because of that zealousness of trying to to figure out what God has shown him, you know some people have been critical and say, well, it didn't happen the way you said, but but I have noticed myself and and watching the the visions that he has, it normally has nothing to do with the dream itself. It just sometimes Brother Gary will think, well, you know, maybe it means this here, but he's always so honest in sharing that and speaking from his heart. And I know that God honors that, but I know for a fact I've seen myself because I people know how I am. I've done videos against dreams, not that it's wrong for people to have dreams or visions. I believe God does it, but because so many people go out there and everybody has a dream, everybody has a vision, and then they, people promote it, and then many of them just fail. And um, But I watched with Brother Gary, and, and as, as, as the time went by, and I've seen so many of the things that, that God has used him with come to pass, 
and, uh, and we may not know the interpretation of it exactly just right, but it, it does happen time and time again. And I do believe that God uses him. I believe he's blessed of God. And, uh, and especially now that you mentioned uh, little brother Nathan, uh, so in fact, someone sent me a, 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 an email not too long ago, and they told me, they said, Brother Steve, isn't it kind of interesting that David's, the prophet that was uh, with David during his time was Nathan as well. And of course, he's talking about the Mashiach, the son of David. And here a young yes. man, 15 years old, and many in the Christian community have criticized this young man because it doesn't line up, Brother Gary, with their theology. And I like the way you started out when you first began to speak about it, Brother Gary. You said that you know, the Jews are under the law, and the Christians are under the grace of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and, and under this particular aspect. And not to mention, like when he's there and he sees only his people there, he's not seeing a bunch of Christians. Everybody gets all bent out of shape over it. But we forget, God said to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, all of them as they were dying, you will be gathered with your people. All right, and I know that we embrace Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as our own as well. But in this case here, the Jews, though, are still under that law. So therefore, it's a different covenant. They have not recognized the Messiah as of yet. And, uh, and so, you know, but give them time, they will. And uh, so anyway, I'd like to get a few of your thoughts, Brother Gary, on, on, on Brother Nathan as well, the thoughts that you have that you saw in this. Uh, and then we'll just kind of move on a little bit further in some of the things that are going on in the Middle East there uh, before we close out. Go ahead, Brother Gary. Yes. Uh, you know what I saw in that? It was, uh, I watched the entire video and I read the transcript from it. So I didn't, you know, I didn't just look at somebody's commentary or whatever on it. I, I really looked at it and I, you know, I looked at it from the aspect of, you know, God wants to save Israel, and he always warns. He warns us before he brings judgment. You see, and we know that in the Old Testament, God talks about his judgment coming because, you know, people, there. the first thing people have to understand, there are two distinct groups of Jews in Israel. There are secular Jews who don't believe in God. They, they're like in America, people that don't believe in God at all. And then there are Jews that are really trying, that love the Lord. You see, the Bible talks about how people that don't know, Paul wrote this, he said, you know, there are men that don't know God who by their very nature, because of their, their, their mind, because God is in them, they do the things of God. They do those very things that are written. They were commandments to the Jews. These men are doing it without even knowing knowing the Jewish law. How do they do it? How do they know? Why would they do that? You know, why would they be compelled to do the right thing? Because God wants, he wants sons and daughters in his kingdom and he loves people. For God so loved the world that he sent his own begotten son, right? Yes. And so we have this, this, this duality of God's nature. And so God is trying, I really believe God is trying to reach out to the Jewish people in these last days, because once, once Christ returns and the Holy Spirit has been taken from the earth, it's going to be a very, very terrible time. And so we know that God tells us that he does nothing without first he reveals it to his prophets. You see, and you have, you have there are stories of people who are in the Islamic faith that die and see Christ. You see, and it converts them. And so... What I believe is that the Lord, because, you know, most, most, because of what the Christians have done, really, to the Jews, they've been horrible. The Catholic Church persecuted the Jews and killed them and, and tortured them. They didn't just kill them. They tortured these people, you know, because they said, well, you, you killed Christ. But that was their, that was their job. Their job was to offer him as a sacrifice for the entire world. They did it according to the law. That was all set up by God. Do you think anybody could kill Christ unless God the Father wanted it that way? You That's see, right. it was meant that way, and it was written in the Old Testament. It was spoken of in there. It was prophesied how he would be rejected and how he would die. You see, and how he would be offered. And all that stuff was the plan of Almighty God himself. And anybody that says anything against that, they're wrong. You see, and so God is trying to reach out, I believe, 
to those rabbis. If you noticed in that room, there was there was probably a hundred rabbis or eighty rabbis in there, listening to this kid. And if he'd come in there and he would have said, "Oh, the, I went and I saw this this Jesus character, this Yeshua guy," and all this stuff, they would have immediately rejected what that boy had to say. That's they wouldn't right. have believed a word. But he said, but the way that the thing happened was un, according to their own law. I believe God showed it to them according to their own law, because Christ said, He said, "Well, what's the law? How do you know to get in?" You see, and so there's a way. I think for them to do something uh, within the law. Yes, yes. And it's and it's to- totally biblical. And so he came to them as a Jew, just like Christ did. What did he say to the Pharisees and Sadducees? All those men, the early church, all those guys he was trying to convince. It said he was, on the Sabbath day, he was in the temple. What was he doing? Preaching. Or he was in the synagogue in this city, preaching. He was reading from the scriptures. That's right. right. That's right. The Son of God was reading from God's Word, telling them how to be righteous, how to walk according to the law. Right? That's exactly what he did. Yes. And so he's reaching out to these Jewish men, these rabbis, these people. This is 2,000 years ago that Christ died, and and a lot of time has went by, and a lot of of water has went under the bridge. And, And these men are lost, you know, and they're they're trying. They're reading God's word and trying to figure out how to get into heaven, how to please God. So many Jews, these, yeah. these Orthodox Jews and all these people that are really trying, they live way more stringent lives than any Christian ever lives. That's right, brother. They really do. That's exactly they right. They sacrifice, they do all these things, you see. And why are they doing it? Because they love God. These men aren't doing it because it's just the law. They're doing it out of love. And if you talk to those rabbis and you listen to them talk, Steve, they they talk about love. Yes, yes. You see, that's where Christians get it wrong. They think a lot of times, unless you know these men and you spend time, like I talked to Rabbi uh, Laser Beans, the Brody. I talked to him one time for a couple of hours on the internet, and, and the man had love in his heart. And if you look at Nehemiah Gordon, a Karite Jew, he has love in his heart. You know, and he tries, they are trying to understand this and reconcile the law with what, what, what happened, see? And these Christians, because of the Catholic Church and all these things, they've stigmatized all Christianity. They've caused the Jews to hate religion because of the damage they've done and how they call they said all these terrible things to the jews you know so you can understand that it's like you know in this country with racism the same thing was done to the jews by the church you know they 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 just did these horrible things so in my belief steve nath this boy i really believe he had an experience because those men vetted him those those rabbis they don't fall for something no that's that's exactly right they don't that's right. Those men vetted him. And I could see the looks on their face. If you watch that video and really look, when the kid says, see, some in the Jewish faith don't believe that there's a place with hell, fire. You know, they talk about Sheol or whatever, but they yes. don't really talk about fire. And the boy said, and there was hell and there was levels to it and fire was coming out. And you watch those rabbis grab their faces. Oh, this kid saw that there's a burning fire that you go into. Did you notice also, what? Brother Gary, he spoke about one thing that really got me, and this, this showed me that, 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 uh, that this young man was, was very honest in his heart. Uh, he may have been coached a little bit uh, as far as on, because he was not raised in Judaism in, in his wording, but right. when he sits there and tells the rabbi, you know, right in front of the entire group there, he doesn't, he does, he's not looking to see if you're wearing a kippah. He doesn't care if you have right. a beard. You know, that right. that shows right there the sincerity of this young man because these are true yeah. things. It does not matter. Right. You know, and he right. dealt right with their customs, in fact, when he said that. Right. Um, oh, yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing yeah. to me. Yeah, it is because that is going against what those men find this to believe. 
Amen. And you're absolutely right. They did co coach him on certain things, like when they were talking about the lights. You know, he saw these three lights, and I believe that was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the three lights, because there was the two, the big light, and then there was the two smaller lights, one on either side. And what I think, you know, they may have coached him into saying, "Oh, it was this rabbi, I believe, or whatever." Right, you know? right, right. Uh, that that could be that could be what they did to him. You know, because how would he even know that rabbi's name or anything? Because he doesn't go to church. He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't go to synagogue. He right. doesn't do any of that. So how would he even know? Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that. that we're not sure on that. That's that's for sure. But right. I, I, I'm, I, I think it's amazing, Brother Gary, especially that, that you came away with the same feeling in your own heart as well. Brother Gary, we're actually, yeah. we're short on time, but I want to ask you as well, okay. a couple other things when, it, when we're going back to the Middle East here for a moment. Um, and that is, we're seeing right now, we've got a lot of issues going on. Uh, we know that now also that uh, the Syrian government is blaming the U.S.-led coalition for attacking its military base there uh, in uh, Deir uh, ez -Zord. Uh the, the U.S. is saying that no, we, our coalition fighter uh, planes were 55 uh, kilometers away. Uh, one thing that was being said by Russia, uh, they stated uh, in regards to this, uh, Pentagon officials said that on December the 6th, American aircraft were operating in that area, but striking a target 55 kilometers away. This is on RT News as well. Uh, in, yes. Installation is true uh, to an extent, but it's not completely true. Now, this is what uh, uh, Kanashkano, Kanashkanovav uh, the Russian uh, uh, man stressed there, he says, two pairs of warplanes from two other countries, members of the U.S.-led international anti-ISIS coalitions, were operating in Deir Ez-Zor area on the day of the attack. Major General uh, Kanashkanov said, if they were not involved in that airstrike, then why are the Pentagon's representatives as leaders of the anti-ISIS coalition hushing up the presence of the Allies' aircraft in the Deir uh, Ez-Zord region on December the 6th. Isn't it because the anti-ISIS coalition air force gets all the information on Islamic State targets in Syria from the Pentagon? General Kan Kanashkanov uh, asked. Uh, he says, I'm very sure very soon we'll learn who really uh, inflicted the airstrike. Now, he's, he's saying this because of uh, as soon as the information is leased by Syria. Now, also, and I just want to quickly highlight these, Brother Gary, and then get some of your thoughts on this, especially in light of anything that may uh, strike your, your mind okay. in times that God has dealt with you in the past or even in the future, because I, I personally go back, especially, you know, Brother Gary, I've gone back a year, two years, and like in the case of this uh, nuclear warhead that Israel would use against Iran, uh, you you, yes. you told me about this, and what caught my attention is that Russia is talking about a special nuclear warhead, and in this case here, you yes. had shared with me back two years ago, Brother Gary, that Israel would use a weapon on Iran's nuclear facility, and it would be a nuclear warhead, but not a conventional nuclear warhead. And so we're going to go into that in just a second, but another issue here we have is um, is that Ankara, uh, Turkey has now sent in tanks and more troops uh, into Iraq, which is right there, by the way, where they're talking about is close to the border of Syria. Uh, we know that, uh, as I've shared here on Israeli News Live, that uh, the, the biblical passage there that speaks about Nineveh being destroyed, this is at that uh, city there. I know there's debate as far as it the same as the ancient Nineveh that, that, uh, that Jonah was at or not. Uh, but I do know that the, the region there was still called Nineveh, even in biblical times. I've seen the maps on that. Um, and, and Brother Gary, just when we're looking at this stage being set, we see the Germans, the British, the French, they're all flying in there now as part of the coalition. They've all got the green light. America's flying in there. Russia's flying in there. Israel's flying in there. We're bound to see in the very near future, Syria's flying in there, Saudi Arabia's sending in weapons. We're, we're about to see a major problem uh, take place here in the Middle East. What's your thoughts? Well, <laughs> they just spoke this morning, Ashcroft did, how they're sending in uh, shoulder-fired missiles to these guys in Syria. They're going to supply them with new, I think they're A- a five or something shoulder fired missiles, 
and they're going to use those against Russian tanks. Oh, my God. You see, Russian tanks are there. Yeah, and why would Ashcroft do that? You see, they're doing a proxy war is what I believe. And this is what I really believe, Steve. The Lord showed me that because, and and I, I put together a little compilation video, and you can go on YouTube on RT News, and you can see where Putin is complaining about the entire Middle East being destabilized by Barack Obama. Yes. You see, and they promised right. them that they would not— yeah, yeah, he is. And and the whole thing is tore up. And all these cities are destroyed. They're complete rubble now. Beautiful cities that you used to be able to go to and all this stuff. And then and because while well, we all agree, I mean, there is nobody that would come against this. But Saddam Hussein and uh, Gaddafi were very bad people. And they needed to be removed. But their countries didn't need to be obliterated. That's right. You know, they've destroyed everything in these countries. And, uh, you know, it's like people complain about Israel all the time and how they're doing this. But you never see a Jew going to a bus stop with a bunch of uh, uh, Palestinians in there and begin stabbing them or shooting them or running their car into them. I mean, very rarely does any Jewish person ever do that. And the same thing with them when they're working these, having these wars with, with the Palestinians and with Hezbollah and all these various arms that are in there. And Israel doesn't go in and obliterate the entire place. That's they right. only do what they have to do, you see. And unlike America, you know, and they were talking about the Israelis shooting these people with knives. We just had a guy in America that tried to stab somebody and they shot him dead. He had a knife. That's all he had. There's, there's another one that had a razor knife and they shot him dead in the street. They didn't taser him. They shot him dead. You know, and over and over again, but yet Obama and and his ilk will say all these negative things about Jews and about Israel and about how they're not, you know, using more restraint against this thing. And it's all it's all part of this whole global thing where the Bible has told us, you see, that that uh, everybody's gonna be against Israel, Steve. Yes. We know that that's what, that's what's going to come down. And, and the Bible tells us, see, just like this boy, you know, I, I keep going back to this boy because I really feel that he had an experience. You see, when you're clean, dead, you have no brain activity. Where did he get any memories from? <clears throat> and people try to say it was a dream maybe or something. <clears throat> and then, excuse me, how did he dream Bible verses that are in the Torah and very specific things like the deal on Gog? I didn't even know that. And I looked at it, oh, yeah, God is buried there. And most people say, oh, no. well, it is in there. There's a burial place for him so that everybody can see it. Yes, done by yes. the Moshiach when he does. <laughs> this kid, there's no way. You know, why would he pick these out if he's trying to prove something for the, the rabbinical religion? No, he was doing this because it was a real experience. And, you see, and, and, and the uh, problem is, Brother Gary, is it doesn't match people's theology way of thinking. And right, that's something right. I've noticed. Anytime, I don't care who it is, you start speaking about things that, that go against the grain. It goes against yeah. the orthodoxy that people have, Brother Gary. Yeah. The first thing that people are going to do is attack you, label you a heretic and everything else. Right. And, and I saw <laughs> this with this young man here. You know, he was very sincere. And, and even I yes, used to was. think, okay, yeah, Gog is Russia. That was my thought as well. Yeah. But you know what? Uh -huh. I had a brother send me a, a very interesting uh, thing. And he says, you know, Steve, I, I have studied deeply on Gog and Magog for years. I've written about it. And he said, I took an honest uh, new approach. And when I did, he said, guess what? He said, I discovered, and he, and he sent me a video of a guy. i got to go watch it. I haven't seen it yet. But he says, he, he said, what is directly due north of Israel, to the, as the scripture says, to the furthest reaches of the north, I believe is how it's worded. And he said, mm -hmm. it's Alaska. He mm -hmm. said, so yes, yeah. he says, is he from Gog? You know, you know, he said, so it's yeah. a very good point. Uh -huh. You know, so we have to step back sometime, Brother Gary, and really, instead of being so critical about things, examine it and see if maybe, yes, what are, what if we are wrong? You know, let's step yeah. back and take a fresh look. And if we're wrong, let's correct it. Exactly. You know, and that's the thing is, Steve, what I believe is happening is is they are preparing, you see, because Putin is tired of the United States and these things, you know, and there are there. I really believe there are people that are above all these people pulling the strings and they want 
a war to come so that they can explain the things that take place by God's hand, like the rapture, those things. When there's a nuclear war, they'll have to put people in camps. They'll tell them, look, you it's too dangerous because of radiation. And this will happen all over the world and there'll be people missing and it'll explain away a lot of what happens, you know, to the, right. to the people that disappear. And so we, we know, uh, you know, that, that Russia has, uh, they hold grudges, you know, and they are tired of what is going on in the world today. They they ask Obama and them to not harm Gaddafi, and then Gaddafi was shot in the head while he was in custody, you know, and on and on and on goes down. You see, because they there is this thing where you, where they do want ISIS to do this thing, but now the world outcry is so great, and I believe God himself has determined that this isn't going to go any further, and that's why... You know, he gave me a dream showing me that that they would be destroyed. And this was months before any of this stuff took place, you know, with Russia or with the thing in Paris or any of that. Now, Paris, everybody's on board with, we got to get rid of these guys, you know, they're really bad. And so they're they're talking, we're going to destroy them. And that's exactly what was spoken in this dream, that they would be destroyed. And so what I think, you know, was we're going to have some limited nuclear war and everybody's going to be hit. Like this kid says, see, that falls right along with what the kid said, was what God showed me. There's a nuclear war with the whole world, and they don't pay attention to Israel because Israel is is really the goal of all this. And so once they do whatever they do, and then they all come together, you see, and he even said that Russia goes in with NATO. Because see, what happens is is this... this, this, Peace agreement. However this... Yeah, right. There's a peace agreement. And these and so then what happens is they're going to force Israel to do these things. They're going to try to divide the land and they probably will. And they'll they'll probably put a unified temple on on the mount and they'll have a place of worship for everybody. And they'll make all these rules and the Jews will think it's good at first. You know, they really will. You know, they'll be right. They'll be Recovering from this one. You see, this kid saw the end time of all world history in just a few minutes. And so all this is so compressed. You know, like he's that, saw that's two why witnesses he's, coming out of the Mount of All. Right. That's why, Brother Gary, we see that he's he was compressing even uh, yeah. what he believed the time event would be. Yes, the times right. event all this stuff transpires rapidly, but I believe there's a gap yeah. between each one of the time events right. that he saw. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, and exactly. You're, you you know you brought exactly. out a good point too about, and I was sharing this with my wife earlier, is that it's going to be a global nuclear war, but it'll be limited because they they don't right. want to yeah. annihilate the earth. But what's going to be happen? Because the young young man saw he sees three million people die. You know, Hiroshima, yeah. Nagasaki. You know, this this was what a quarter or no about a, a yeah about a quarter of a million people died between the two nuclear mm-hmm. bombs there. So to get three right. million people, brother Gary, to die as a result, it's not going to be a conventional war. It's going to be that Russia mm-hmm. is not going to let someone defeat them, and they're going to hit some major cities, and then they're going to get hit back, and it's going to be exchange. Yeah. You may see you may see London hit. You may see uh, yeah. places in America hit as a right. result. Yeah. Uh, but once they yeah. do this, that, like you said, even Damascus, all these places that get hit, and then you know they'll step back and say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa we got to, we got to stop, we got to stop." Right. Yeah. Before the world's destroyed. Exactly. Brother Gary, we're going to have to close on our broadcast here. Just hang on but, with me just a second, but, brother. But Steve, but yes. before we close, you know, people really. We need to know that this is the love of God through this promise to his people. That's where it started. Christ came to, it said, Paul said, to the Jew first. You see, God loves Israel. And people need to get that in their minds, that they need to love their brothers and sisters over there that are blind. Like Paul said, he said, have compassion on them because they are temporarily blind so that you, you Gentile, can be saved. That's what this is about. Yes. This is about God saving his people who he made this great and grand promise to, who have blessed the whole world. They say that 90-something percent of the new patents come out of Israel. All these great things for saving water and for fertilizing and for doing all of these miracle things, cancer uh, cures, all these things. And at the same time, the Palestinians, the Arabs, all these people are talking, are murdering people in the name of their religion, and the Jews are blessing people. 
Amen. Who are the terrorists? Amen. You know, who are the terrorists? So that's what I wanted to say. God, you know, God bless Israel, Amen. really. People need to cry out for them because they are a very few people, 6 million against 250 million just surrounding them. 250 million against six. It's just, it's just sad. It is. You know? It is. Brother Gary, thank you for being on with us. And if you'll hold on just a second, we'll close out here. God bless you for watching. We thank you, those who have joined here on live stream tonight. I know it's been a blessing uh, for you. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see the comment section when we run the way we do because it, it takes up too much uh, streaming time. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching. And those of you that if you had any difficulty in seeing it there, we'll be uploading it. It'll be up within about an hour's time up on YouTube there with, uh, along with some other uh, things there. You'll be able to see some of the things we talked about as well. And uh, we'll show you a shining picture of Brother Gary so you can uh, have a face to go with the voice. Uh, check out his uh, channel there, Brother Gary. He doesn't care about being promoted or anything like that. He, Brother Gary is just not like that, but it is Bear049 on YouTube there, and uh, I know you'll be blessed there, to say the least. God bless you, and thank you for watching. I'm Steve Benin with Israeli News Live. Shalom.